Hey there! Today I've got a BB-37 Vaporwave to take a look at, and this one happens to be my first review for 2023. I'll walk you through an unboxing, first impressions, the transformation demo, and then close that out with the box grade. This figure was released last year on a pretty limited run, and to my memory it was initially hard to get a hold of, at least in the western world. For a long time the only place I found it for sale was through resellers on eBay, and they always had it for a huge markup. Anyway, I'm pretty excited to show it off, so let's get this party started. First off, let's talk about some package details. It's a whole lot of pink with some light green accents. We'll talk about where that color scheme comes from a little bit later on, but beautiful artwork as always. On the front, you've got the Insect Faction symbol, and like I said before, it was released last year, which was the 5th anniversary of Beast Box. And this package includes a 5th anniversary lenticular insignia. Very nice graphic add-on. And of course, inside the box, the figure itself. One thing that stood out on the package to me is this label on the back. It's all in English, covering the usual product details sidebar. I'm not sure why they did this. I'm curious if this was a regulatory requirement or something for product sales within the U.S. Who knows, but it does seem pretty extraneous. Of course, the package isn't really what you came here for. I've got my trusty Red Devil, and we'll go ahead and get it open. Inside the package, we've got the molded bubble enclosure. You've got the figure itself, which includes a custom box charger. So yeah, we'll set that aside for a second. I'm not going to pull this out, but as with all Beast Boxes, it comes with a backdrop insert. If you've got these on display, that's a nice little add-on to have. If you've got a character card, a plastic box charger insert, and a catalog. We'll take a quick look at this character card. Beautiful artwork on the front. So I've recently become aware of this, but it's kind of a peculiar thing. Normally for a Beast Box character designation, which you always see on the retail listings and promotions, they always designate it as BB with a dash, and then the character number. But on the card, apparently it's always just BB without a dash. I have no idea why they did this, but it's a thing. So, yeah, let's see what it says about Vaporwave. Vaporwave is a code name. She does not have a real name, or the name has long been forgotten. Her past was wiped clean when she joined the organization. Which organization? The Insect Faction organization? I don't know. The code name is a mystery to her. For quite a long time until that fateful mission when she tried to get through the Dimension Gate into this world. What the heck does that mean? I don't know, but it's definitely some kind of a character lore. Vaporwave apparently has had her mind wiped. We don't know why. We don't know where she came from. She doesn't know and she couldn't tell you, but it's a point of interest. So moving on, we'll get the character out of her box. So you've got this fancy box charger and the character herself. We'll set Vaporwave aside for just a second. This box charger is very nice, kind of a light pink design, totally transparent all around. It has frosted sides, doesn't seem quite heavily as frosted as some other ones that I've gotten more recently, but that might just be my perception. Vaporwave is spelled out with a regular pink opaque ink with kind of a lavender drop shadow. So yeah, that's definitely fitting with this Vaporwave aesthetic. Another thing that I think is worth talking about is how 5T Toys likes to include pop culture references and little Easter eggs in their character designs. So we've got a couple of things going on here. We'll just kind of talk about this for a minute. First, the most obvious thing is Vaporwave is based on a praying mantis. More specifically, it's based on an orchid mantis, which I believe is specific to Southeast Asia. And the thing about orchid mantises is they've evolved to mimic the look of a blooming flower. It's a beautiful insect, which lends itself towards a very specific character design. It's really neat. So I know I keep saying this, but one thing I love about 5-2 Toys is they could have just cheaped out and did a repaint of the existing Reaper design. But they really went the extra mile and obviously did a study on this specific genus of mantis. So orchid mantises are distinctive for their conical compound eyes and limbs that look like flower petals. So they really retooled the original figure to more accurately replicate the real life insect. And another thing, the designers are very obviously into music, which finds its way into many of their character designs, and that's certainly the case with this one. In case you're not familiar, the name Vaporwave is a direct reference to an entire music subgenre. It's not very well known, but it's a specific type of electronic pop that usually incorporates not only the music itself, but a visual style that's derivative of 80s era pop art, color schemes, and graphic aesthetics. You usually hear it as a backing track in Dead Mall videos, and if you're not familiar with that, definitely do a search for Dead Malls here on YouTube. Anyway, the 80s was arguably the height of consumerism, and the Vaporwave aesthetic is more or less nostalgia for that bygone era. So taking a closer look at the character, it's a very beautiful design. You got a lot of whites and light transparent pinks, and reddish pink accents. The compound eyes sparkle with a very subtle application of light green fleck paint, which does give it a very pretty sheen. These fancy gold graphics are tastefully applied, outlined along the abdomen. Tons of great little printer details. You got danger, these little graphics here on the limbs. The wings also have a flake paint application which gives them a really beautiful sparkly sheen. Beautiful detail all around. Moving on, here's the insect faction insignia. 
Also, I had noticed before I picked this figure up that the forelimbs have this red-pink spray paint application. I can't tell if this was done with the plastic or somehow if it's actual paint. Either way, it's another really beautiful effect. Yeah, something else I guess I could say about this is, if you look at this with this color scheme, and you'd obviously perceive it to be a more of a feminine character. And the character card does more or less confirm that. And in nature, yes, of course, there are male orchid manises, but, but being a very girly color scheme with lots of pink, so for a guy, you know. It looks like a pink nightmare. Moving on to articulation, it's got a lot of head movement and can turn sideways and up and down. The limbs have a lot of mobility with articulation on three joints and they can rotate it outward on a ball socket. It also has a rotating waist. So as far as 5T Toys more recent figures, this is one that I think they hit a home run with. So now I'll go ahead and give you a demo of how this little bug gets transformed. First thing we can do is compact all six of the limbs. You just fold them up where the joints go logically. Same on the opposite side. Super easy. So you'll have the hind limbs paired together and then you fold them back at a 45 degree angle. For the main wings, you rotate the top half down to fold under the bottom half. The four limbs just fold up like the rear limbs. The pointing tip will fold up and under the leafy part of the limb. And this piece will be flush with the shoulder. For now, we'll go ahead and rotate these limbs up and out of the way just to give a little clearance for the next steps we need to do. For the head, that's actually gonna go into the chest piece. So you just open that piece up and it's on a rail. So you basically pull it forward then slide it down the head rests on top of the interior of the chest. Then the torso will fold up 90 degrees into this position. These hind limbs are gonna fold up and cover the head like so. Then you've got them in this position. At this point, we can rotate the four limbs back and around to get them into this position. I'd recommend leaving these loose for now so you can get all the other pieces where they need to go into their approximate positions. Now this whole tail piece will rotate up like so. And we're gonna start connecting parts together. So you've got these tabs here to connect the forelimbs to the hind limbs. This porthole on the top part of the abdomen will plug into that tab. On these midsection wings, you've got this little tab that's gonna connect into this piece. This little corner piece just goes right into that groove like so. This part has a tab right here and then there's this little slot inside of the pointing end of the forelimb. The main wings have interlocking tabs here, so they just push together like so. Now the butt wings fold down, then you've got this little tab right here that's going to fit into these hind limbs. So you just push that down and connect these parts. So this is one of those figures where there's a lot of limbs and interlocking tabs. So it's the type where it's usually a good idea to scrunch it up a little bit when you get everything tabbed up, just to make sure all the connection pieces are nice and snug. Okay, there's Vaporwave in her box mode. Beautiful. That flake paint effect goes a long way towards making this figure really shiny and pretty. And in the light, you can't catch a bad angle on it. So not the most beautiful box mode, in my opinion, but certainly compacts nicely. And of course, it slides right into its box charger. Now it's time to give Vaporwave a box grade. This is my rating system of 5 points possible in 6 categories for a total score of anything between 0 to 30 points. This one is a showpiece of 5-2 Toys' very thoughtful attention to detail. The way they study biology and incorporate pop culture references and music themes into a comprehensive character design that you connect with on multiple levels is a 100% 5 out of 5. Its highly articulated, deadly looking forelimbs are an action crowd pleaser. Along with that, it has tasteful paint applications and color production techniques that are definitely a level above a regular production figure. 5 out of 5. Transformation is fairly easy, parts connect logically and lock together securely. And in spite of being a more recent mold with more sophisticated engineering, for the most part, instructions probably aren't even necessary. 4 out of 5. Though it's a bug, it ain't a stick figure and has a ton of posability. 4 out of 5. Construction is really good with lots of well-appointed pin screws and friction joints, and of course it has beautiful paint applications. My copy did come out of the box with slightly looser limbs than the Reaper counterpart, although none are floppy. 4 out of 5. It's a fun figure to pose and transform, and it looks amazing. As an objective blend of beautiful design and pop culture, it's a really good one to have. 4 out of 5. That brings the box grade total to 26 out of 30. Of course, this is just one guy's opinion. You know, I don't actually consider myself an action figure collector, and at the same time, I'm not especially drawn to more feminine looking figures. But more importantly, the appeal of Beast Boxes to me is not just the character design, but the thought process behind it. Vaporwave is a very thoughtfully designed figure, and I'm really glad I have it in my collection. I hope your new year is off to a great start. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a comment, or a like, share, or subscribe. I'm looking forward to talking with everyone again, but in the meantime, have yourself a great day. Thanks for watching.